hi everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you are all doing well now oh my gosh thank you so much for sticking by me this last week major tech difficulties it's very first world problem i'm very aware of that but when it's your full-time job it's kind of stressful but i do now have a new laptop and a new editing suite and everything is hunky dory so thank you so so much i have taken a break from uploading videos because i lost some as well i lost two videos on my old laptop but here we are we are in a brand new series of videos now i tend to theme my videos at least i have done this year i would say i've kind of had a running theme and we are into oceans now so honestly if you if you follow me on instagram you'll already know that oceans is my next few weeks of videos there are so many possibilities and Today's video is up there as one of my favourites. I feel like I'm putting my favourite video out first. <laughs> so yeah, where do I where do I go from here? Anyway, I hope you absolutely love this because I had no idea if it was even gonna work until it was over and done and dusted and oh, it worked. It was a huge success. So I hope you love this and I hope it inspires you because after knowing what I know now, the possibilities are endless, capital E. Let's go. So I have got quite a selection of shells. Now, some are from the store. I've got this box here, which I believe I got from the range. It's like home decorative stones and shells. I also got a gorgeous box and a container filled with seashells from my amazing patron, Kari. So huge shout out and thank you to Kari. She lives right by the coast and she was able to send me some stunning seashells. Now, rule number one, when you are making a silicon mold of something, it has to have a flat bottom seashells absolutely do not so whilst I was really excited to mold some seashells I had to work out a way to make the bottoms flat because none of them are they're either irregular they've got canyons and holes the way I'm gonna do it it took me a while to think about it I'm gonna use polymer clay did you know that seashells are oven proof guys <laughs> I'm probably the only one who didn't know this. Why, like, why would I know that? But honestly, the only way I could think of making these seashells moldable was to create a base out of polymer clay. And then, of course, my first question was, can seashells go in the oven? Like, am I, are they going to explode? Like, what's going to happen? And Google says they are indeed microwave safe and oven proof. Like, who knew? I did not. But this is game changing information. There are some stunning seashells out there. Oh gosh, I was just beyond excited. Okay. Plan of action. I rested it down on some polymer clay. I just rolled out some polymer clay. I pressed the seashells down into the polymer clay until I was happy that all of those side holes, those cracks, those those kind of holes where the seashell was lifting up on the sides, it was deep enough to cover those. I'm not too worried about the um, neatness of the base, as you can see here. You just want to make sure that you've got no holes whatsoever in the sides of your shells. This one here was the one with the quite a large crack out of it. So I made sure that my polymer clay was quite deep. It's around nearly, I want to say nearly a centimetre deep at this point. So I pushed my seashell really down into that polymer clay and I just went around with my fingers and my thumbs and I pushed that clay in and up around the sides. Now I'm not pushing it right up the sides of the seashell because of course I'm going to take a silicon mould of this and I want as much of that authentic detail to come out in the silicon as possible. I'm just making sure that None of that silicon is going to seep down in and under into any cracks or crevices. And that is the whole point of polymer clay. Now, I have not seen this done. Trust me, I am sure it has been. I'm not sitting here pretending this is my original idea by any means. I just didn't look it up. I didn't Google it. I didn't go onto YouTube to see if anyone's tried it because I really wanted to try it for myself. So here you see me just making sure that all of those edges are filled and right at the tips of these seashells, there is a hole. 
I only noticed it right at the last minute, so make sure you study your seashells. I really wanted to, really wanted to mold this one, but it had a thousand teeny tiny prick pin, pin prick holes. So that's gonna be for another day. I could not stop at three. I was gonna just do three, but I decided to try this big flat shell and the two conical, conicals, is that the word? Oof, guys, conical shells. So these all went in the oven at 110 degrees for two hours. And oh my goodness me, I was so happy it had worked. Of course, that's not to say that they'll mold nicely, but the polymer clay in itself was a huge success. If you wanted to, you could go over at this point and sand down some of that polymer clay edge. Did I? No. <laughs> Who am I? I do not sand. If I can get away with it, I won't do it. But I did try to make sure that I cut that polymer clay as directly close to the edge as possible. And you want to try and cut straight down. Try not to cut your polymer clay in and under the shell. Try to cut straight down down. Now these two conicals here, they just had a smidgen of clay, like a teeny tiny bit of clay, just enough to give them a flat bottom. And finally this seashell here, it was afterwards, you can see the thumbprint in there, I noticed it had a pin prick hole at the top so I really needed to push that clay down inside to come up from the back and fill the hole from the back. So make sure that you study your seashells because any little holes could spell a silicon disaster. The next thing for me was to choose the vessels in which I'm going to make the moulds. Now my first initial thought was to mould them all individually. This was in fact a really short-lived thought process. I remembered of course I have this mold housing by Let's Resin and I am a Let's Resin silicon ambassador so of course all of the details will be down below. The silicon and this mold housing can be yours for the 10% off and of course that will be in the description box. I just played around with the space that I had and I knew that these three larger shells don't know the names of these shells. I really should have googled before I came on to do the voiceover. I didn't know the name of the shells but all three fit in here really really nicely. Of course I'm just playing around at this point. There will of course be tape across the bottom of these and that is to come. This shell, oh, the polymer clay fell out of the bottom of the shell. So this is just so you know, you know, this is the first time I've tried it. So just be aware that if you are doing those super flat fan kind of clam shells, that there is a risk that the polymer clay won't stick to them. I think with the other shells, it was easier because there was lots of nooks and crannies for it to grip onto, but the flat shell, there's really nothing for it to grip. The next step for me was to cover the bases in sellotape. Now, I'm just using standard cheap Amazon packing tape. It works like a dream and you don't get any sticky residue from the silicon. And I'm just placing down my seashells in the position that is going to work best for them. If you are making silicon molds, you just need to make sure that they are spaced enough apart away from the edges and away from each other to make sure that that silicon can get right down in there in all of the little nooks and crannies and making sure that the silicon wall between your item and the edges is thick enough to withstand and also the wall between your items. So each of the seashells, I needed to make sure that there was a decent enough space between them and the silicon wasn't just, the, the wall was gonna be too thin, you know? Cause there is a risk of it ripping at some stage. So just had a play around until I was really, really happy with the positioning. And there was a really generous, doesn't look like it here now that I'm editing, but there really was a generous amount of space around each and every shell. Next up for me, I decided that the largest round cookie cutter that I have would be absolutely perfect for the flat shell and the two conical shells. Now, yes, that polymer clay did come away from the seashell. It did separate. I didn't glue it back in. I'm just risking it at this point. I didn't have any super glue to hand. I didn't have, I could have maybe epoxied it back into the shell. 
didn't really want to do that. If I'm honest, sometimes I just want to get things done and learn from it. Like I didn't really want to wait another eight hours <laughs> to epoxy to epoxy it back in. Oh, lazy crafter! I should change my channel name. But yeah, I'm really really happy. They are completely flat. They are completely stuck in. And now we get to pour the silicon. The silicon, like I said, is the silicon rubber from Let's Resin. All the details will be below. Now we can color this with mica powder. So I am choosing this beautiful pink from the Sahara range at resin pro they are up there as my favorite mica powders ever ever <laughs> you would have seen me use these mica powders in projects before but absolutely beautiful so again the first mold when you are making a silicon mold you do need to pour your silicon from quite a height i'm about two foot off the desk at this point this is to make sure that any of those air bubbles trapped in that silicon are blown out by itself because the higher up the more force and then the air bubbles are just gone this is actually bubble free silicon and as soon as you pour it you can just see all of the bubbles releasing itself so really really beautiful check out this color this is the resin pro sahara range in copper oh it's just beautiful and as soon as i started pouring i knew i didn't have enough i knew i didn't have enough it's hard to gauge yes you can measure your molds you can find out how much you need you can use dry rice and then measure the rice i tend to choose the lazy route <laughs> if you've been with me a while you'll know Ain't got time for that <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that um i just pour and hope for the best and if i have to make up more then so be it and that is exactly what happened here i just had enough to fill mm, nearly over the top of the large shell but you also want to make sure that you do fill up what a, a good either quarter of an inch or half an inch over your item so that you've got a really solid base to your silicon mold so yeah i did know that i had to come back in and just mix up a fresh batch it really doesn't take long and of course this takes a couple of hours to set so it still had plenty of time but look at this copper mica absolutely stunning it does it does look a bit sinister <laughs> I'm not gonna lie because it actually does look very red and <laughs> that did look a little bit sinister there but it's all good but yeah really 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 happy I checked for leaks I kind of sometimes hang around just to make sure that there are no leaks and if there are I plug them up I didn't see any okay this is the next day this silicon does cure around seven hours five six seven hours you don't have to wait till the next day but i waited until the next day first thing i noticed were the leaks now this happened because i used packing tape and i guess okay i shouldn't really confess this but i really should have cleaned my mold housing thoroughly before I used it again so um let's resin actually provide you with a really strong double-sided tape and that is what I've been using so far now when you peel that double-sided tape off sometimes there is some paper residue that I just usually scrape off or wipe off with some alcohol I didn't do it this time um kind of forgot if I'm honest I just stuck the tape on there not really thinking and of course the packing tape is just nowhere near as strong as the double-sided and that is why we have a couple of leaks but no real drama no real tragedy it's still a beautifully functioning mold and just look at that mica color I just can't um, it's not even the whole point of the video. Like, we're making moulds here, but the actual silicon. Okay, moment of truth. I was so nervous. I didn't know if silicon would stick to seashells. Like, at this point, I didn't know if silicon would stick to seashells. I, I didn't even know if they'd come out. But they came out and I just... I was screaming happy tears inside. I was so, so happy because at this point, I now know I have got a fully functioning silicon mold for the most beautiful seashells that I've had. And the best part is I can make a hundred more seashells that look 
just like that huge one and I can just repeat the process and you could make them out of jesmonite or epoxy resin or any other casting compound, plaster, cement, whatever you want to make them out of, you can make them out of. And I actually think a jesmonite seashell would be beautiful because it's so heavy. It's like double the weight of epoxy resin. Um, but yeah, I do intend on making epoxy resin seashells from these. But the second mould, again, sellotape came away beautifully really really happy with this when you use a metal cookie cutter the silicon pops out like a dream is the easiest vessel to use apart from of course the mold housing which is versatile because you can make it bigger or smaller depending on use but the cookie cutters for a quick easy simple small um mold perfect absolutely perfect i'm loving I just was loving. I'm doing this voiceover quite soon after demold, so I'm still quite high. I'm still quite giddy at the fact that this worked and I'm buzzing. I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm buzzing. Okay, let's talk about this one. I had problems. I had problems demolding this one. Um, nothing too tragic, the mold is perfect, still works. But what had happened, because the polymer clay had actually come away from the seashell, the silicon found this. The silicon found that gap. That silicon is, it's just going to find absolutely any teeny tiny gap, crack, you name it, it will find it. And it found it. Um, it worked its way in between the seashell and the polymer. But like I say, it did not ruin the mold. It just means I've got a little bit of trimming to do. And that is what I do. I get my scissors out and I just trim around. Happily knowing that this is still a fully functioning seashell mold. And nothing, no value has been lost. Like it is absolutely beautiful. I am beyond happy at how these molds came out. The next step for me is to actually create something using them and I am, it's ridiculous, it's actually ridiculous. I think these might be the most amazing things I've ever made. And honestly, like I said, I don't know if anyone's done this before, guaranteed a thousand people have, but the polymer clay and seashell hack, I'm calling it a hack, cause I know, I've not done it before works like a dream. I really hope you found that helpful. Now, I am sorry to have to split it into two, but that would be the difference between a 15 to 20 minute video and a 30 to 40 minute video. And honestly, that's a long, long time. So I hope you'll join me on Monday for part two, where I make, where I make actual real life looking seashells because that's it. That is it. They are stunning. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'll see you on Monday and thank you so, so much for watching. Bye.